Hey y'all, today we're gonna talk about a topic that's crucial to all boat owners, boat maintenance. To be more specific, we're gonna be talking about common boat maintenance mistakes that a lot of people make and that you should avoid. So let's jump right in. Mistake number one, neglecting regular engine maintenance. So a common mistake is overlooking regular engine maintenance overall. Oil changes, oil filter, air filter, and so on, Raycor filters. You always wanna follow your manufacturer's recommended timelines to do this, but it's best to keep a log and a record of when you need to do this next. So one thing that I learned is to label the actual product with a date if possible, like an oil filter or something where you can write on the last date it was changed, the hours on the engine at that time. So remember, maintaining a healthy engine will mean smooth boating in the future and avoid unnecessary breakdowns. So don't skip those regular engine maintenance checks. Another part of maintenance is diesel engines like to run. So if you don't take your boat out for a little while, you should start them at least once every two weeks. Run them for about 15 to 20 minutes until it comes to temperature. Check all of your fluids and check all of your raw water ports. Mistake number two, improper battery maintenance. Boy, I could write a book on how to improperly maintain your batteries. And we lived that for a few weeks. So you may remember from an episode last fall that we had a major crisis with our batteries in the middle of the night. But before that, I should have seen the signs leading up to that crisis. And it was that I was burning through water in my non-maintenance free or non-AGM batteries, my flooded lead acid batteries. And I should have known that that was a sign of improper maintenance. And what that was is my battery charger was overcharging my batteries, which was burning through my water in the batteries. So what ended up happening at two in the morning, I was cooking my batteries. It was letting off a noxious fume that set off my carbon monoxide alarm and we had to evacuate the boat. And it always happens at 2 a.m never happens at 2 p.m. So a result of improper battery maintenance was three mechanics and $6,200 later. Now we have AGM batteries and a brand new charger that will not overcharge our batteries. So always ensure that your battery terminals are clean and free from corrosion. Regularly check the water levels if you have lead acid batteries and keep them charged. And don't forget to carry a backup battery or battery jump starter for emergencies. Your boat's battery is its lifeline and neglecting them can lead to very frustrating situations out on the water. Mistake number three is not taking good care of your hull. By that, it's as simple as when you're out to sea and you come back, you wash your hull down, make sure all the salt deposits are off the hull. Also, a good wax every two years is imperative. So most important is taking care of your hull below the water line. Having a diver, clean barnacles, uh, algae, seaweed once a month, and then hauling your boat out about once every two years, you could maybe go three years depending on the anti-fouling paint that you're using. And when you haul it out, what you're doing is you're also checking your running gear, your through hulls, everything below the waterline. Make sure everything is in tip top shape. Mistake number four is using the improper cleaning products on your boat. There are some great products, but using correctly is gonna cause a major problem. I used to use acetone to take off all marks and everything on my hull. I would hate having any marks on my hull. Well, after doing a little bit more research, I found out that it can take off the gel coat on your hull. So I only use this in extreme circumstances and then I wipe it down afterwards. I used to use this stuff like 409, but it could be a harsh chemical. This stuff is invaluable. However, you gotta wear a mask when you're using it because it contains a lot of bleach, most of them anyways, but you don't want mold and mildew on your boat. So I use a lot of it, but again, proper application is important on this. Another common goofball mistake by me, Captain Tom, is combining products together. So a lot of times I would use, you know, a little rust remover and then maybe this on top of it in the same area with the same rag. And now you're combining chemicals, which could be not good to inhale. The other mistake not to use, this is really common sense stuff, is wear gloves when you use harsh chemicals. Let me go back to the acetone for a minute. I would never use gloves while using this. And every time I use this product on a rag, and it would seep through on my hands, I would have this metallic taste to my tongue. That probably took five years off my life right there. Another mistake that I've made in the past is using bleach in our holding tank. Two things it does, it kills healthy bacteria in your black water tank, 
and also it hurts your seals, your rubber seals in your toilets and your gaskets. And I just thought of another goofball mistake that I made is for a while on my deck, I was using Mop and Glow because it made it shine. It made my anti skid shine really nicely. But what I didn't know is it started a wax buildup and that was awful. Then it would attract all the dirt to it. You don't want any kind of wax like that on your non-skid or on your deck. So don't be like me. Don't use Mop and Glow. And that's a wrap on common boat maintenance mistakes. By avoiding these pitfalls, you can ensure a smooth, safe boating experience. Thanks for watching and we'll see y'all soon.